Hi, my name is Mr. D and today I want to take a look at a system of inequalities SAT problem. So we have if P and Q are positive integers and the inequalities below and P is greater than Q, what is the value of P? So when we look at this problem here, we have P squared minus Q squared is less than 6 and P plus Q is greater than 4. Now since we're trying to find the value of P, it's tempting to just plug in answers to try to work something out. But for this example here, I promise you're going to run into some difficulty if you try that. So we have to look at this here and think, why did they tell us or give us the form P squared minus Q squared? We should recognize that as a difference of perfect squares. So the first thing we'll want to do is factor P squared minus Q squared to P plus Q times P minus Q. And we know that this expression here has to be less than 6. And then we look at P plus Q is greater than 4. But notice it matches one of the, one of the factors here. So we could write this concept or this given information above, that P plus Q has to be greater than 4. But next what we should also consider is the fact that P has to be greater than Q, which if we subtract Q from both sides, this gives us P minus Q is greater than 0. So if we write that up top over here, P minus Q is greater than 0, now we know specific information about both of these factors. But since there's something else that we have to consider, that P and Q are positive integers, which tells us that these factors here both have to be whole numbers. Because when you add whole numbers, you're going to get another whole number. But we look at the first factor. They told us P plus Q has to be greater than 4. Well, since we're dealing with whole numbers here, the first whole number greater than 4 would be 5. So one potential value for P plus Q is 5, then 6, then 7, and the list will continue. And if we look at P minus Q, remember P and Q are whole numbers, and they're telling us that P minus Q has to be greater than 0. So that means for the second factor, we consider the numbers 1, 2, 3, and so on. We're listing all the whole numbers that are greater than 0 here. So but now we go through like, kind of like a quick trial and error. You could quickly rule out a lot of numbers in the list. We look at 5 and 1 first. If we multiply 5 times 1, 5 times 1 equals 5, and that's less than 6, so it checks off. But notice, watch what happens if we try to use 6. If we do 6 times 1, or if we do 6 times 2, this one would be equal to 6, this would be equal to 12. But these do not satisfy the inequality that, th that this product has to be less than 6. So both of these numbers here, 6, doesn't work. If we try this with 7, 7 times 1 is not less than 6. That won't work. So we could rule out the numbers in this list. And likewise, if we try out anything greater than 1 for the second list, notice if we do 5, if we do 5 times 2, 5 times 2 equals 10. But this product is not less than 6. So we would have to cross off 2, and if we do 5 times 3 is 15, that's not less than 6 either. So we cross off the rest of the numbers in the list. But what this tells us is that these factors could only be 5 and 1 respectively. So what we could set up now to solve this problem is a mini system of equations. This tells us that P plus Q has to equal 5, and P minus Q has to equal 1. So one thing we can do here is just add this system of equations together. And notice we'll get P plus P is 2 times P, Q plus negative Q is 0, and then we have 5 plus 1 equals 6. We divide both sides by 2, and this tells us that P is equal to 3. So our final answer to this problem is going to be choice C. The value of P is equal to 3. Okay, well this is going to conclude this video on a system of inequalities. Thank you all for watching and I hope that this was helpful.